Hello students. See, as we know in the last video, we have learnt about the Gauss theorem. So in this video, we are going to learn about the applications of Gauss theorem. So before going to the derivations, so we know the concept of Gauss theorem and Gaussian surface. So according to Gauss theorem, it states that the total electric flux over any closed surface is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the total charge enclosed by that surface. And we have to know about the Gaussian surface. What is this Gaussian surface? It is an hypothetical closed surface of any shape and size considered in an electric field is called the Gaussian surface. So that we can choose the Gaussian surface as a closed surface of any shape and size that should be in electric field. So here we are going to derive an expressions for electric field at a point due to a different shapes of the conductor. In that the first application is the expression for electric field at a point due to infinitely charged wire using Gauss theorem. So to, to determine the electric field intensity at a point due to an infinitely charged wire, so let us consider a uniformly uh, uh, area of cross section of infinite length conductor which is given a charge to that. So this is an infinitely charged wire. So assume let P be a point at a distance r from the charged conductor where we have to find out the electric field intensity at that particular point. Assume the Gaussian surface in the form of a cylinder because we know that the wire is in the form of a cylindrical shape so that we are assuming the Gaussian surface in the form of a cylinder. Our intention is to find out the electric field intensity at this point. So by using Gauss theorem so that assume the cylinder that is Gaussian surface in the form of a cylinder we have to calculate the total flux over this surface. So we know that the total flux over this surface can be assumed the flux through this circular shapes and flux through this curved shape. The electric flux through this circular shape will be equal to 0. Why it is 0? As we know that the flux is given by phi is equal to E ds cos theta. What is that theta? Theta is the angle between the direction of the electric field and the normal component. So at this point the normal component for this area will be along this direction and the electric field will be along this direction. So electric field and normal component are perpendicular to each other. If theta is equal to 90 degree, the value of cos theta is equal to 0. Hence, there is no flux through this circular shape. So, there is no flux through this area, there is no flux through this area and the remaining surface area will be the cylindrical shape of the uh, surface. So, here we are going to determine the value of total flux over the curved surface of the cylinder. For that, let us consider the definition of uh, electric flux. We know that d phi is equal to E ds cos theta. So we are deriving only for the curved surface. So that here the value of theta is equal to 0. Why it is 0? So we can assume like this. So this is a cylinder. If I take the electric field, the electric field will be along this direction. And the normal component is also in the same direction. Therefore, the value of theta between the normal component and the electric field will be equal to 0. If theta is equal to 0, then cos theta becomes 1. If I substitute the value of cos theta in this expression, we will get d phi is equal to E into ds, where ds indicates a, a surface element. So this cylindrical shape will be divided into large number of surface elements of area ds. So I have considered one such element here. So this is the surface element which is taken at the point P. So this flux is through this surface area. Now my intention is to calculate the total flux over the surface. Hence the total flux over the entire curved surface is phi is equal to the summation of d phi. We know that d phi is the small flux through the surface element ds. If I summate all the area elements, then we'll get 
the total flux. So that total flux is equal to summation of d phi that is equal to summation of E into ds. So here we are summating the term which is bifurcated that means which is splitted. So in this electric field we have taken the complete value the net electric field whereas ds is the small surface element therefore we have to summate summation this summation of ds is equal to 2 pi rl where 2 pi rl is the surface area of a curved surface of the cylinder so if i substitute the value of sigma ds in this expression we will get phi is equal to e into 2 pi rl so let us consider this as equation number one we know that by the Gauss theorem phi is equal to 1 by epsilon naught into q this is a statement of Gauss theorem we know that the total flux over any closed surface is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the total charge enclosed by that surface and q be the charge present inside this Gaussian surface so q be the charge present inside this Gaussian surface but we know that lambda is equal to q by l that means lambda is nothing but the linear charge density linear charge density is the charge per unit length therefore q can be written as lambda into l if i substitute the value of q in this expression we'll get phi is equal to 1 by epsilon into lambda l if you compare these two expressions if you compare equation 1 and equation 2 we will get e into 2 pi rl is equal to 1 by epsilon naught into lambda l so l and then l get cancelled here l and l get cancelled the remaining term will be e is equal to 1 by 2 pi epsilon naught lambda divided by r or we can write that in a standard form that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 2 lambda divided by r because this 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is nothing but the electric field constant so this is the expression for electric field intensity at a point near an infinitely charged conductor or charged wire this is the second applications of Gauss theorem what is that expression for electric field at a point due to a uniformly charged infinite thin plane sheet see let us consider an infinite thin plane sheet and we have given a charge to that uh, infinite thin plane sheet so our intention is to find out the electric field intensity at a point near to the surface of the thin plane sheet to derive this expression let us consider two points p and q on either side of the thin plane sheet which is very close to the plane sheet assume the Gaussian surface in the form of a cylinder in the last derivation we know that the flux through the flat surface that is curved surface will be maximum through the flat surface will be equal to zero but here we have assumed the Gaussian surface in the form of a cylinder such that the area of cross section will pass through these two points P and Q now we have to define the total flux over this entire surface that is the entire Gaussian surface so we know that the total flux or the net flux through the entire Gaussian surface must be equal to the flux through the surface area ds at the point P that means this is the small surface element of the area ds so we are finding that electric flux through this surface plus flux through ds at q that means this is the area of cross section the flux through this area of cross section will be that one and the third one flux through the curved surface that means what you have taken this curved surface we have to find out the total flux over that so we know the definition of electric flux that is given by phi 1 is the flux through the surface area ds phi 2 the flux through the surface area of this area phi 3 be the flux through the curved surface so by the definition of electric flux we know that phi 1 is equal to eds cos theta phi 2 is equal to same eds cos theta and phi 3 is same as that of eds cos theta 
So here the theta will be equal to 0. Why it is 0? See observe this one. This is the area of cross section. The normal to the surface area will be along this direction. And the electric field is also in the same direction. So electric field and the normal component will be in the same direction. Hence the value of the angle between those two will be equal to 0. So through this area theta will be equal to 0. So we have substituted the value of theta here cos 0. Similarly, here also the normal component and the electric field are in the same direction. Here also the value of theta is equal to 0. We have substituted that, that E is equal to ds cos 0. And then third one that is eds through the curved surface. See observe this one. Electric field will be along this direction. If I take the infinite thin plane sheet, electric field will be on either side of the thin plane sheet along this direction and then this direction. But the curved surface, if I take a curved surface, electric field will be along this direction. But normal to the surface will be always along this direction. Hence, the electric field and the normal are perpendicular to each other. Hence, theta is equal to 90 degree. And we know that cos 0 is 1, therefore that becomes EDS. Here also cos 0 is equal to 1, that becomes EDS. But here cos 90 is equal to 0. So 0 into anything is 0, this term will cancel. The remaining will be phi is equal to EDS plus EDS, that becomes 2EDS. So this is the total electric flux over the entire Gaussian surface. So we know that the curved surface will not have any flux, only the area of cross sections will have the flux. That is given by 2 into E into ds. Next, by the Gauss theorem, we know that the Gauss theorem, by the Gauss theorem, the total flux over any closed surface is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the total charge enclosed by that surface. That is, phi is equal to 1 by epsilon naught into Q, where Q be the charge present in this area of cross section. So we know the surface charge density definition, that is surface charge density is the charge per unit surface area. Therefore, sigma is equal to Q by ds. If I cross multiply this one, here we will get Q is equal to sigma into ds. If I substitute the value of Q is equal to sigma ds in this, we will get phi is equal to sigma ds divided by epsilon naught. So consider this as equation number 2. If we compare these two expressions, if we compare the equations 1 and 2, we will get E 2E ds is equal to sigma ds divided by epsilon naught. Here ds and ds get cancels. If we cross multiply this 2 to the right hand side, we will get E is equal to sigma divided by 2 into epsilon naught. So this is the general expression for electric field intensity at a point near to the infinite thin plane sheet. So this is the third application of Gauss theorem. That is expression for electric field intensity at a point due to a charged spherical conductor. So in this we are going to derive an expression for electric field at a point due to a charged spherical conductor. So to derive that one, let us consider a spherical charged conductor of radius r. We have given a charge plus q. Assume the Gaussian surface in the form of a sphere. Let p be a point at a distance small r from the center of the spherical conductor where we are going to derive an expression for the electric field intensity at this point. See, let us divide this Gaussian surface into large number of surface element. I will take one such element that is the value of ds. So ds indicates the surface area of this element. At this point, the electric field is always along the normal to the surface area. So the normal of the area and the electric field are in the same direction. Since they are in the same direction, the value of theta becomes zero. Now, we are going to define the electric flux through this surface. We know the gen concept of electric flux, the number of field lines passing normally through the given surface area. So our intention is to calculate the total flux over the entire Gaussian surface. Therefore, by the definition of the total flux over the Gaussian surface that is given by 
phi is equal to summation of eds cos theta where eds cos theta is the expression for electric flux this summation indicates the total flux over the entire surface since we know that the normal component and the electric field are in the same direction the value of theta is equal to 0 therefore since theta is equal to 0 cos theta is equal to 1 if I substitute the value of cos theta here then that becomes phi is equal to summation of E into ds so what we have to submit we have to summit the quantity which is splitted or divided so in this we are taken the complete electric field and the area will be divided into large number of small elements so that we have to summit those elements therefore phi is equal to E into summation of ds if we go on summit all the areas over the entire surface that gives the surface area of a sphere we know the expression for the surface area of a sphere summation of ds is equal to 4 pi r square where 4 pi r square is the surface area of a sphere if I substitute the value of this summation of ds in this expression we will get phi is equal to e into 4 pi r square so call it as equation number 1 we know that by the Gauss theorem we know the expression for Gauss theorem we know the statement of Gauss theorem it states that the total electric flux over any closed surface is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the total charge enclosed by that surface therefore Q be the total charge enclosed by this Gaussian surface and phi is equal to 1 by epsilon naught into Q let us consider this as equation number 2 if we compare these two expressions we will get E into 4 pi r square is equal to 1 by epsilon naught into Q if I rearrange that expression then E is equal to if I take that 4 pi into cross multiply the here therefore 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught if I cross multiply this r square to the right hand side that becomes Q by r square hence the expression for electric field intensity at a point due to a charged spherical conductor is given by E is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by r square so this is the expression for electric field intensity at a point outside the spherical conductor second point if we consider the point P on the surface of the conductor so that if the point P is on the surface of the conductor then the distance of the point is equal to the radius of the spherical conductor that means that smaller indicates the distance of the point from the center of the spherical conductor capital R indicates the radius of the spherical conductor that becomes equal then the expression can be written as E is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by R square so this is the general expression for the electric field intensity at any point due to any conductor for this situation we can this write this expression like this and we can rearrange this one we will get the expression that is E is equal to sigma by epsilon naught how it is see observe this one 4 pi r square indicates the area of that spherical conductor Q is the charge so charge by area indicates the surface charge density that is represented by sigma divided by epsilon naught therefore E is equal to sigma by epsilon naught is the general expression for the electric field intensity at any point due to any conductor any shape conductor but in this case we have taken for spherical conductor so E is equal to sigma by epsilon naught next for third point if I consider the point P inside the spherical conductor so assume this we have taken this conductor we have given a charge the charges always resides on the outer surface of the conductor if I consider a point somewhere inside the spherical conductor and this is the Gaussian surface what we have written if the charges are present outside the Gaussian surface then the net flux over this Gaussian surface is always equal to zero that means the total flux over the surface is equal to zero if the surface is zero that implies Q inside the spherical surface that is Gaussian surface is zero if Q is equal to zero then the expression for the electric field becomes zero hence the electric field inside the spherical conductor is always equal to zero because there is no flux there is no charge inside the Gaussian surface hence the flux over the surface is always equal to zero hence the electric field is also zero inside the spherical conductor